Coming face to face with danger reminds us just how precious life can be. For Carl Gala, that moment came on the morning of February 28, 1991, at her home in Glen Ellen, Illinois, as she and her two young daughters were getting ready to run some errands. Thursday morning, we're always in a big rush, and uh, I kind of wanted just to clean up a little bit before I left. I don't want to argue with you, Janine. I just was wearing what was the second to the last load of clothes. Come on. Come on. Get out to the car. When I opened the door and smelled fire, I looked in the garage and there was nothing there. So I thought, well, this is really weird. And then when I turned around is when I saw the fire. Oh, my God. And just stay right there, Andrea. I thought, I can handle this. Maybe I would have been able to handle it if I had a fire extinguisher. Andrew, get outside! So I ran to get a bucket. I just panicked. Because you don't realize how fast these things go. Carol called 911 to report the fire. I tried to help her. She said, don't just stay away. It was hopeless. No, my children are all outside. Okay, I'll be out in front. Please hurry. Andrea, come on, let's go. Come on. Stephanie? Stephanie? Stephanie! When the door slammed, I thought she went in the house. Then I thought that if she is in here, she is in big trouble. Stephanie, where are you? Stephanie, come here right now! The garage door closed all by itself. And I'm like, uh oh. Members of the Glen Ellen Volunteer Fire Department responded, including Chief Stuart Stone. When people dial 911, the tones go off, everybody has a pager so that everybody knows where it is and what is happening. We're all volunteers. We all live within the community. And during the day, we're out of the station in approximately uh, a minute. In the house, fire department is responding. Glen Ellen police officer Joe Bakke happened to be on patrol in the area. I was only about three blocks away. So I responded to the scene to block traffic, which is what we do. At, at fire scenes. What? She didn't know whether or not her daughter was in the garage or in the house itself. I don't know! I remember thinking that this little girl might die. <laughs> he ran in the house several times. And he couldn't breathe, and he said it was tremendous heat. In the meantime, I'm outside, hysterical. Expedite, right away. Neighbor Cliff Halpin saw the smoke as he was driving by. The first thing that hit me was to uh, get some cloth and dip it in the snow so that I could breathe through it when it was wet. I gagged and I started coughing and I had to turn back because I got such a deep breath full of the smoke. <laughs> Where is she? When I finally knew she was in there, she called me in that little, hardly a voice, you know. I couldn't go and get her. I feel like I should have been able to do that. You take upstairs. I'll take that. Here. As Joe went into the garage, and and I knew that I might have to go in after him, 
Um, that was real scary for me. Where's the door opener? Carol! Carol! The wires must be burned because it's not working. And it was a matter of time. And either he was going to come out in 15 or 20 seconds or I was going to have to go in. Call your daughter. Stephanie! Answer me, Stephanie! Stephanie, answer me! I thought the very worst thing had happened, and I just lost it. I mean, I just felt like someone was sucking the life out of me. It was just like a big, empty, black feeling. She's in the garage! Get underneath her. <coughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, come here. All I remember is they moved her to the front of the house on a flat surface. And then I remember Cliff telling me she's breathing, she's alive. Her eyes were closed, she was completely limp. And um, I had never seen anybody like that before that, that had all this spittle around their mouth. And I, just, I knew it had come from her lungs. So she was very, very gone. Paramedic Mary Alice Van Hefty and her partner also responded to the fire. She was lethargic when we first saw her. She wasn't a typical little kid. She wasn't even crying. She just looked at you because she was so frightened. And then she started to cry a little, and then she was wiggling all about like a little person was supposed to. Officer Baki was also treated at the scene. This sounds really corny, but I think God sent him to me. He just jumped right in there, and um, he didn't think twice. It never crossed my mind that I was really in danger. My concern was was for the little girl. We were just so lucky that he showed up because if he didn't show up, I know that she would have died. I know she would have died. Four-year-old Stephanie Gallo was taken to the hospital. After five days, she was released with no permanent damage. She's a great kid. She's very happy, happy-go-lucky. My life would just not be the same without her. It was later determined that the fire was caused by clothes under the dryer that had come in contact with a pilot light and ignited. I should have had a fire extinguisher. And if you don't have one, then you shouldn't probably try to even put it out. You should try just take your kids and get out. And I, I should have done that. Stephanie's father, Steve, is also grateful to Officer Baki. The physician at the emergency ward in the hospital said that Stephanie had 90 seconds left. Uh, but she made a full recovery, and uh, we have Joe Baki to thank for that. The man is definitely a hero. I think Joe is really nice for saving my sister. He beats up my brothers for me. He's just extra special. I mean, he took it personally. I mean, it was like he was not going to let her die in there. I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time to help her out. And I just did what needed to be done.